Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Oxygen Not Included. Today, I've got an experiment for you. In today's episode here, we are going to be exploring the idea of a safe room inside of your base. That safe room is going to be an area where you have a concentration of oxygen, where your duplicants can go to catch their breath in case everything else is potentially full of a vacuum or carbon dioxide or something horrible. That's going to be the idea. The other element behind this is that it might actually reduce the amount of oxygen your duplicates need to survive on a day-by-day -day basis. So actually reducing the amount of oxygen you need. We're going to find out if this is real or not. Now this comes from a comment I read from Kelsier. And in this comment, he's talking about using a trick where he has one of these little tiny rooms with an algae deoxidizer inside of it that allows duplicates to harvest or mine easier. And those are some areas where you're not really going to have a lot of gas control. This is a something I used in my mega base challenge at one point, except for I used a, a terrarium, and I've actually used it in my other bases as well, just to give them a spot to breathe. But I never actually did it with a deoxidizer. And the real key part of this comment comes in here, that 4x4 area never seems to run out of air, which got me thinking about how duplicants actually consume oxygen, right? So when you look at a duplicate, you can actually see that they are inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide. So you can see right here, duplicates require oxygen to live. And we can see just how fast that is. So that is negative 100 grams a second of oxygen. And then exhaling 2,000 milligrams of carbon dioxide. And right now, that duplicate is holding breath. So Meep, Abe, and Lyria here are all holding their breath, which means they're not consuming oxygen. Now, if you take those duplicates and then you put them into an area where they have oxygen, they catch their breath, does the rate at which they are inhaling increase or does it stay at the same level? Because if it stays at the same level, then we can effectively use less oxygen, you know, and trade it for stress, essentially, because your duplicates will be stressed out that they have to hold their breath. So that's what this experiment is set up to do here. So you can see in this area right here, I have uh, basically a vacuum. There's a little bit of carbon dioxide which has been given off here by these duplicates as I've been spinning things up. All they have here is a source of food and their only source of oxygen is this algae deoxidizer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this twice from this exact point right here and We'll see how long the duplicates survive. So I'll put in a controlled amount of algae, and then we'll just go from that. So for the first experiment here, I'm actually going to leave this area open. So that way the algae deoxidizer can just kind of let the oxygen flow into the base. This will be the control. I also have an Atmos sensor set up right here to allow this thing to turn on or off. So this thing will be on if we are, let's say, above zero. So it should be activated as on pretty much all the time. There we go. So at this point, let's see how long they survive before they suffocate to death. Now I thought these doors set to open would suck down power, but apparently that's not the case. Don't they usually do that? Or did that get changed? Ah, experiments, they get me every time. You try to set it up perfect and it just doesn't work out. Third time would be the charm. 200 kilograms, there you go. Take that up. All right, there we go. So now I've got my control experiment ready to go. So I've got 100 kilograms of algae. If we see that, we got that right there. Spot to put it, that's gonna be above zero. There we go. And I have something that's sucking down all the power over here, which is just a bunch of refrigerators. I'm gonna go ahead and set the threshold on this to 100%. That way they always are queued up to do something. So right now, we can see that Lyria is inhaling nothing, exhaling nothing. Once this thing starts running, she'll hopefully come over here and start inhaling something. So she's inhaling 100 grams a second. I think there's some merit to this. Interesting. All right, cool. Let's let this run and we'll see how long it lasts. So we can see now that we've been here for a little while. The oxygen has kind of spread out and gone throughout the entire base. We have around 500 grams thus far. It looks like the things might top off right around 600 or 700 throughout the base. It's barely breathable in most areas, but it should even out to be yeah, just about breathable. 
So what will be interesting here is to see the reports. We can see the amount of oxygen that's going to be generated and the amount that's going to be removed. And we'll see that if we block this room off, if that has a big impact on how much, you know, how long we can survive with a given amount of oxygen. So you can see cycle one, we had 90.9 .9 kilograms generated, 91.9 .9 removed. So cycle two, we're already starting off with a good amount of oxygen removed. No more is being created because we no longer have anything in the deoxidizer. So we've used up all of our algae. One thing to kind of note is that these duplicants, you know, not often are they getting the 10% debuff for low oxygen. Like, I'm really not seeing it that much. So if we look at the overlay, once again, we can see here that the oxygen is really being consumed quite, quite a lot. Everything's being replaced by carbon dioxide. Now, for the most part, they're spending a lot of their time down here at the bottom, holding their breath. So how this will compare to an enclosed room, that'll be interesting. Because they're kind of already doing a little bit of what I'd expect them to do, traveling into this room and, and hold, you know, holding their breath down here and then traveling into the room. So now we can see that there's pretty much just about hardly no oxygen at all. It's just kind of flowing around here in, the, in cycle two. We'll see if these duplicates can locate any more oxygen or if they're pretty much just going to be out of luck at this point. They're looking for oxygen. People are suffocating. Everybody's suffocating. Oh boy. They cannot locate any oxygen because it's now flowed. You know, it went someplace where they can't get to it. And they're dead. Thank you for your sacrifice. It was for science. All right, let's go ahead and load this back up. But this time we're just gonna let it run and I'm going to leave that room closed off. And we'll see if we can make it further than the end of cycle two. Which, so at this point, all I got to do is crank it up. I'm going to go ahead and fill up this little area here with oxygen. Everything else is going to remain carbon dioxide. So the one thing to note here is that I have this thing set up on a little bit of an Atmos sensor. So only if it goes down below a certain level do I actually turn this thing back on. So for the most part, it's going to be off. That's why I'm calling it kind of like a, a safe room or something like that. It's meant to be a backup area for your duplicates to go and catch their breath. All right, so here's the end of cycle one. My duplicates are <laughs> having a horrible time, uh, suffering from hypothermia. They're holding their breath and they're sopping wet. Really not good for stress, but the experiment here is actually providing some interesting results. We've added only 18 kilograms of oxygen. However, we've removed 51.5 kilograms. So we've extended that. Remember that was 90 and 90 in the first cycle of the last, you know, run through of this experiment. So a big, big difference. Okay, so here's some really interesting results here. We've made it to the end of cycle two, and I still have algae left over inside of this deoxidizer. Now that was gone in the other experiment by the end of the first cycle. I still have 36.7 kilograms of it. <laughs> so right here we can see that these duplicates, by holding their breath, are consuming far less oxygen than they would, you know, just breathing easily within the base. So they are trading. If you look at their stress down here, it should be low oxygen, 10% per cycle uh, stress level for a significantly less amount of oxygen that they need to survive. So if we take a look at the amount that was removed today, it's 34.3 kilograms. That is half of one duplicate on a normal cycle if they had oxygen being provided to them 100% of the day because they would normally consume 60 kilograms worth in a single day. So that is why your colony can require less, or you can produce less oxygen than your colony requires and still survive. So the amount that was created here was only 36 kilograms just to kind of balance out the amount that was removed. So that is something that is really useful. You'll probably want to build a couple of these safe rooms just in case you run into an emergency and need a quick source of oxygen, you know, that your duplicates can use. I'm going to go ahead and add these to pretty much every base I build from here on just so that I can get into those areas that are difficult to reach, you know, areas that are going to be require mining without oxygen or, or a lot of farming. If I'm going to have like carbon dioxide farms, this seems to be a perfect thing to have kind of in between a couple of doors. I probably wouldn't do a water lock here 
just because you get the sopping wet debuff every time you run through it, <laughs> you know? I only did that for the sake of this experiment. So you can see here, even though there's carbon dioxide in this area, there's still always going to be a tile with oxygen inside of it. So this can just keep going on and on and on. All right, so I'm nearing the end of cycle three and I've finally run out of the amount of algae I have, or just about. We're only down to two kilograms. But how about that? An entire extra cycle. That is really impressive. All right, so I finally reached the point here where I have consumed all of the oxygen within this base. So these duplicants, unfortunately, are about to suffocate to death. Now, if we do compare the two experiments, on the first one, these duplicants did hold their breath quite a lot. Now, even if you are in a base with very low oxygen, your duplicants will hold their breath. So that's why we saw that being at, at 90 kilograms instead of being up there at 180 kilograms, which is what they would have normally consumed if it was in a very oxygen-rich environment. We can see here on the reports, though, over the last couple of days, cycles right there, that was 36.5. So that's nice and consistent, each of them consuming a 12.8 kilograms. So that's your number. That's your minimum number of the amount of oxygen a dupe needs to survive per cycle. We can also see in the previous day right there, that was 11.8 10.4 so the numbers kind of like do this number a little bit but you can tell that it is quite a bit less than what they would normally consume so the idea of a safe room or an oxygen rich environment inside of one of these little four by four tiles is a really really good idea now i'm going to try something a little bit different here on just this experiment and i'm going to put polluted dirt inside of this room here because polluted dirt gives off polluted oxygen We'll put 200 kilograms inside of here, and then I'll dig that up. So now, this is giving off polluted oxygen. Now, whether or not it'll give off enough for these duplicates to go and breathe it, hmm, I guess we'll have to see. I might have to actually start this experiment over again. But one idea is that you could have an area where you have all of your polluted oxygen and stuff in one spot. So that right there, giving off only two kilogram, two grams a second is not enough. Everybody died. I tell you what, I'm gonna try to put a couple of morbs in there. So if I take this guy and I put him in there, let's see how that works. So if we take a look at the oxygen that's being produced, it is polluted oxygen and it does have slime lung in it. But it just goes to show that it doesn't necessarily have to be clean oxygen for the duplicates to seek it out and then catch their breath. All right, well, there you have it, guys. I feel like that was a nice, successful little experiment there. And the takeaway from it is that you really can reduce the amount of oxygen you need in order to survive inside of your game. Safe rooms are absolutely awesome. Thanks for that comment, Kels here. That, I think, is going to be really useful to a lot of us. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. Let me know if you found it useful down there in the comment section below and if you have some other ideas for other experiments. Thank you guys for watching. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a wonderful day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar, out.